Hello guys, hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna talk about the cask of Amontillado. Just before we start, let me show you the steps that we're gonna be following. Number one, we're gonna give you a brief summary of the story. Number two, we're gonna introduce the characters and the setting of the story. Number three, we're going to talk about the themes in this story. Number four, we're gonna talk about the irony in this story. Number five, we're going to talk about the foreshadowing and the symbolism in the cast of Amontillado. Let's start with number one, which is the summary of the story. The story starts with the narrator, Montresor, explaining that a man called Fortunato has insulted him several times and he decided to take revenge by killing him. Can you imagine the recklessness of this man? He decided to kill a man just because he insulted him. He plans to use Fortunato's knowledge of wine to lure him to his death. Montresor continues to narrate that he and Fortunato were going to a carnival. He explained that Fortunato is dressed as a jester. Montresor then told Fortunato that he has a cask of wine that he thinks it's a Montiaro and he wanted to taste test it. And want to bring it to their friend Lucchese to taste test it. He knows Fortunato will be jealous in asking Lucchese instead of asking him to taste test the wine because he think of himself that he is the best wine connoisseur ever. And actually this was exactly what happened. Fortunato insisted that he is the one who should taste test it and leads Fortunato down to his family catacombs. Montessori leads Fortunato to his home empty because the servants have gone to the carnival. The two drink and walk with Montressor pouring Fortunato to come back when he find him coughing. He tried to act as if he's caring about him. He told him, come back, come back, you're coughing. You don't have to do this, let's get back. He did this because he's quite sure about Fortunato's ego and he will insist to continue. And actually, this is exactly what happened. Fortunato insisted that he will continue their trip into the catacombs. They walk arm in arm until they reach a dark crypt full of human bones. In there they find a recessed area about a four feet deep, three feet wide and seven feet high. Fortunato continue into this crypt with Montresor urging him into the smaller space. Then suddenly poor Fortunato was chained to the walls and Montresor begins to break up the opening of the crypt. Fortunato keeps saying please jokes and then silenced. He thought that the man is joking with him. He couldn't realize that Montresor is killing him because actually he doesn't do anything to him, but actually he was on his way to kill him. When Fortunato realized that Montresor is killing him, he screams and begged to be released, but Montresor doesn't hear him, and he continues building up the brick, and then he left him. Then at the end he says that this event was 50 years ago, and he says, rest in peace. Number two, the characters and the setting of the story. Let's start with the characters. We, we have four characters. Montresor, Fortunato, the servants, and their friend Lucchese, who was the wine expert. Let's start with Montresor. He was a cold, calculating, cunning, and a very well planner person. On the other hand, we have Fortunato, who was cocky, greedy, and fool person. The third character was Lucchese. He was a wine expert who does not appear in the story. But Montresor repeatedly mentioned him to Fortunato, pretending he is on his way to see him to ask about the value of the Amontillado, because he was quite sure of Fortunato's ego and he will insist that he should be the one who taste tested. The fourth character were the servants, who does not appear in the story. He just ordered them not to leave the house, fully expected that they would leave the house as soon as he back would turn to join the carnival. The themes in Casco of Amontillado. The first and the most important theme that we have in Casco of Amontillado is the theme of revenge. All this happened because Montresor, the narrator, wanted to take his revenge because the insults of his friend Fortunato. The second theme is folly of pride. Foolish pride is one of the themes that affect both main characters of the story. Montresor concludes that he must have revenge on Fortunato because of his boomed pride. On the other hand, we have Fortunato, who was also a pride person. He forgot about all his plans on a flash as soon as Montresor mentioned asking Lucchese about the wine. 
His pride continued to motivate him throughout the story. It's when Montresor told him, come back because you're coughing, his pride prevents him from going back. Even though he was drunk and he was coughing, instead of protecting himself, he insisted to continue. And these two themes were the main themes in the cask of Amontillado, revenge and pride. The irony. We have three types of irony. Situational irony, dramatic irony, and verbal irony. First, what's meant by situational irony? Situational irony is something that happened we don't expect to happen. Actually, this was obvious when Fortunato thinking he is going to a public carnival party and a wine tasting, but he is actually taken to a private crypt for a dark purpose, which is killing him. The second type of irony that we have is a dramatic irony. What's meant by dramatic irony? It's something the reader knows that the characters don't. You, as a reader or as a spectator, knows that Montresor hates Fortunato and he's planning to kill him. But actually the character himself, which was Fortunato, he doesn't realize or he doesn't know that he's taken to the catacombs to be killed. So this is a dramatic irony. When the reader knows something, the characters don't. The third type of irony that we have is verbal irony. The verbal irony is when what is said is different from what is meant. Like for example, the character name Fortunato. Fortunato is the Italian version of the Latin name fortunate or blessed. Yet, Fortunato was anything but fortunate or blessed because he was killed at the end. Another verbal irony, it was when Montresor keeps saying, let's go back, your health is precious. But actually he doesn't mean this. He was sure that Fortunato will insist to continue because of his ego. This was the irony in the story. Foreshadowing. First, what's meant by foreshadowing? Foreshadowing is when the writer gives you a hint about what will happen in the future. Like for example, if you watch the movie of Troy, when Achilles went to his mother and told her that he will go to the war of the Greeks, she told him, it's okay, you can go my son, but you will never see home again. So this foreshadowed that something wrong will happen to him. Sometimes it happens if you're watching a series, at the end of the episode they're going to give you like 10 seconds from the upcoming episode just to raise your curiosity. So they are just giving you a hint about what will happen. This is foreshadowing. So let's apply the foreshadowing in the cask of Amontillado. It was Montresor family motto and the coat of arms also foreshadow retribution. The family Latin motto means no one insults me with impunity. Impunity means like no mercy. His entire family takes revenge. The motto shows a human foot crushing the snake who bit it. This foreshadows that Montresor is the snake and Fortunato is the snake who has bitten him. This was the foreshadowing in the cask of Amontillado. Symbols. The first symbol was the carnival, which is a massive celebration. They are viewed as a lively and fun. The second symbol was the catacombs, which is the symbol of evil and death. The third was Fortunato outfit or Fortunato jester, which includes a conical cap and bills. And it was symbolizing Fortunato's foolishness. This was the most obvious symbols in cask of Amontillado. The point of view in Casco of Amontillado was first point of view as the narrator Montresor was narrating the story. So he kept using the pronouns I, we, so it's first point of view. The plot in the Casco of Amontillado. First, what's meant by a plot? A plot is the most important events in the story and we categorize it according to five elements. Exposition, rising action, climax, falling action and resolution. First, the exposition. It was Montresor's memory. He vowed to take revenge because his friend Fortunato had insulted him. So on this part, the narrator introduced the characters and introduced the setting. The second part of the plot, which was the conflict and the rising action. The rising action is when Fortunato and Montresor were descending into the catacombs. Each step is bringing Fortunato closer to his death. 
The third point of the plot is the climax, which is the highest point of suspense in the story. It is the point when the main conflicts can be solved or can't be solved. And this happened when Montresor is successful in chaining Fortunato to the wall of the catacombs. The fourth element of the plot is the falling action, which is usually after the effect of the climax. And here, as Montresor breaks up the wall, we know it's over for Fortunato. This was the falling action. The resolution, which is the conclusion or what happened after this, is when the narrator Montresor mentioned that this story happened 50 years ago. And this was the plot of the cask of Amontillado. Let's go to the setting, which is the time and the place. The time was during the carnival season. The place was Venice, Italy. Now we're done with the cask of Amontillado. Just before you leave, don't worry, I'm not gonna to tell you to like, subscribe or share. I'm gonna tell you to practice. I'll display 20 questions in front of you right now just to recap what we have said to make sure that you understand and the answers will be displayed at the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.